Hi, so my brother and I were replacing the garage door opener and we ran into an issue where a ceiling beam was blocking the full extension of the rail. So the rail itself is about 10 feet and it did not fit across from the uh, from the start to the end here because of the ceiling beam. So we had to end up cutting it and we couldn't find a lot of information on the internet so I'm making this video and uh, talking through some of the pain points we went through and some of the uh, the places that you have to cut in order to make it fit. So uh, the first thing here is you'll notice the ceiling beam. Uh, between the ceiling beam and the garage door opener we left two inches and the reason why we left two inches is in the back there's actually controls that control where you actually customize and set the travel of when the door opens and closes. So make sure to leave about two inches or one and a half inches where you could fit your fingers in there and adjust the travel. Now um, realistically you can only cut about seven inches max I would say from the on the rail and there's actually three things you have to cut. You have to cut the rail itself, you have to cut, uh, you have to, uh, cut the chain and you have to cut the cable uh, and all of those three things you have to cut consistently you know six uh, in our case we cut six inches so um, think about this for a second is um, the rail when when you cut uh, an amount off the rail that's the that's uh, that restricts the amount that the door can travel up and open so imagine if with a 10 foot rail you cut five feet of it now the door has five feet less to open so that is the critical point of how much you can actually cut. So in our case, it was six inches, and we cut off six inches from the rail, and we cut, we removed six inches of chain. And here's where the cable is. And you'll notice uh, the cable is, we cut the cable and we reconnected the cable sh by shrinking it six inches and using cable ties. So you'll see the position here, and I'll go into a little bit more detail later on uh, about where to cut it because we actually didn't cut it in an optimal place but luckily it worked out for us so you'll notice when the door opens the chain actually goes from the left to right here and when it closes it goes from right to left and you'll notice that where we have the cable it's almost close to that almost close to that pulley where it's gonna go around because the the cable goes around uh, to a certain point. So here's a picture of the cable. So so the way to cut the cable is you, you can use basically uh, bicycle cable removers. Just be very careful here where when you're removing a link that you don't remove um, so so there's like a, a millimeter where the link connects and you have to make sure that pin is still in that millimeter uh, otherwise if you pop it out you, you, you'll have a hard time putting it back in but it's very standard as far as um, if, if you're used to removing bicycle chains it's the same exact way to do it um, now you'll notice here this is a chain drive so um, I, th this is how you set it but I did want to show you some the a little bit of the travel and where we cut it so so we removed six inches of the chain and you could remove it at any point but we removed it close to where the ca where we're gonna cut the cable uh, so but it really doesn't matter where you remove the six inches of chain you'll see this is the travel mechanism that goes up and down the the rail and you'll see the rail actually comes in three or four pieces and we cut so let so we cut it in the middle and I'll show you a piece there and and th this is the cable ties we used and I'm gonna have links in the description area so this is three and three th and thirty three and thirty two or one eighth inch cable ties which is the smallest they come in um, and I'll show you this again later on um, but here is the piece that we cut and you'll notice we cut it at the end of the ridges where where it actually connects to a smaller piece so um, I'm just trying to give you a close-up here of, of sort of the section that we cut which is about six inches six and a half inches here now it doesn't have to be exact but because you can adjust you, you can adjust the tension and all of that so you could you could be within a couple of inches uh, in all your cuts and it doesn't matter as long as the rail fits where you want to place it now here's where we cut the 
uh, cable. So you don't remove the cable, you just simply cut it. And when you cut it, you, you sort of shrink it and connect it. So, so you're not cutting six inches, away, uh, six, six inches of cable. You just split it so that you could connect it again. And you'll see here we use cable ties. Now here's where we made a little mistake where we cut it too far to the end. What we should have done was cut it closer to the right here. So closer to where the chain is. So we should have cut probably five inches away from the chain and then connected with those two connectors there. And the reason being here is um, uh, think about how the chain travels. So as I mentioned before, uh, where the chain, if, if you go back to the section where I, where I talk about when the, when the chain opens, it goes from left to right, and when it closes, it goes from right to left. So keep that in mind and imagine that. And uh, I, I wish I did a better job of recording this whole process, but I figured this would be helpful uh, because there wasn't many resources. Well, uh, that's it, and thank you for watching.